Got something new for my bench today. Been waiting many years to buy one of these. Used to be really expensive, but looks like they lowered the price a little. And it's going to go right there. I think I'm going to rearrange this whole shelf. I'm going to put this on top of the delay that's going to go right there. But what is it? It's a lab power supply. Not just any lab power supply, but it's got dual outputs. So I can do more than other projects, maybe? Let's have a look inside. As you can tell, I'm a huge Siglent fan. I got Siglent bench meter, Siglent scope, Siglent power supply. And soon, I hope I'm going to replace this unit. I don't want to call it a piece of crap because it still works, but I'm going to replace it with a, yep, you named it, another Siglent. So, what's in the box? USB cable, eh? Hmm. Don't have a thousand of those in my house. What else do we got in here before I try lifting this up? Power cord? Got millions of those in my house, too. Hmm. What else? Oh, this is going to be hard to lift out of this box without me uh, putting the phone down. So we'll just put a slot in here. Can I get my hand in there now? Oh. You guys know how hard this is to unbox stuff with a camera in your hand? heavy too. Which way is the front? Oh, that's the front because I see a binding post. <laughs> this is hard to do. There we go. Oh, we also have a manual in the box. I got lots of those for all my other Sigmund products, so I'll toss that in there. My gander at that later tonight. First, oh, look at that, eh? <laughs> smells good too. Just joking. It smells like plastic. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Whoa. Nifty. I mean. I think I won't spend too much on a power supply, but let's take the plastic off of this. Actually, let's wait. Let's see what's around the back here. It's on the back. Oh, well, USB port. Oh, looks like I'm going to have to change some stuff here, maybe. What do we got here? Hmm. Uh, well, maybe not. It's set to 110. Yeah. 110 looks like it needs to be... Hmm. Hard to see when you're looking at the phone and the thing here. So what do we got? 120. 210. Screw it. Let's just plug it in and see what it does. Yeah. Here we go. So let's look at this. It says, for 120, verify the voltage before turning it on. Oh, duh. What does this actually say? It says, verify the power line voltage setting. Hmm. So for 120, Operation. It says that this is supposed to go over here. So, like that. Let's plug it in. See if we get any smoke. 
wait, I got a, I got a uh, power plug right there. So let's see. <clears throat> Yay! Well, that turns on quick. Wow. All right. That's all I'm going to do for now. I'm going to mount it on my bench over here now. But for now, we got power. I've always wanted one of these. Probably a lot easier to work on op amps and small projects with the dual power supply. So I can have two rails and a ground. So negative, ground, positive, and use the two of them to do like small op amps and small amplifier projects. Plus we got a five volt fixed. I know. What do we got? 2.5, 3.3, 5 volt. Wow. Let's gook them. I did go over the manual before I bought this guy, but uh, I ordered some test leads too. And I know a couple guys on EEV blog don't like these. They're actually kind of crappy. Did these come off? No. Damn. Oh well. Anyways, um, but it was within my budget. And that's what I could afford. I don't need anything really high-end skookum. Maybe if I win the lottery someday, but. All right, guys. And as you can see, Power Supply is unboxed. I've been playing with it. Give me a couple days since I've opened it. And you can see that my bench has changed a little. Yes, it's messy. I'm still organizing and thinking out how I want to uh, organize things. And I got to figure out this spaghetti down here where I want to put my cables so I can access them because it's a pain. And yeah, so as you can see, I got my power supply, my meter, signal generator, my scope. And I even have my favorite amplifier on the bench to show you guys how well this power supply works. I bought this because it has dual rails that you can program here and here per rail and you can do paralleling or you can do series so you can go up to 64 volts or you can do 32 volts at uh what is it three six and a half seven amps i believe don't correct me on that um but anyways so i thought i'd give you a quick demo of how i have it connected right now i have it in normal mode it's not in parallel mode nor in series, which means I have to individually set the channels for the voltages that I want. Right now, I just have it set for 20 volts at 1.7 amps per side. And that's plenty to run this thing. Um, so anyways, we have our negative rail pushed over from positive to negative, which would give us our center for a positive negative rail. And then we have the positive side so down here, we have it connected. We have the negative side, positive side. White is ground. White is ground with signal in and speaker out, going to a lobe, and then to my signal cable. Sorry, I lost my thought. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, scope probe, sorry. And right now, I have it set 20 volts, 1.7 amps on both channels. If I push power, we'll see that the scope will start turning on. The amplifier will be on. Um, I just have a fan here just to cool this heat sink because it's probably pretty small for this little Class A amplifier. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to show you, if we turn it off, how we start from scratch and then go from there. So we first turn it on, it comes on, it defaults everything to zero. So channel one is selected. So we go like this and turn it all the way up to 20 volts, 20. And then we hit amps to tell it how many amps we want to give it. So I'll go up to 1.7 again. And then we go over back to volts and we click channel two, and then we turn that up to 20 volts. Eighty, nineteen, 
20. Now we click amps again to tell how many amps we want to program. And we push it to 1.7. Go back to channel 1. Now it's set. So now what I've been doing is I'm just pushing all on. And the reason why I do that is because if you do this one at a time, it might cause some uh, issues with the amplifier turning on properly. And, and it's under load right now, so that will cause, if you notice on here, I'll show you when I turn it on, but it'll cause one side to go up and not complete the um, waveform. So let's go like this and go on. It's on. The amplifier's on. We have 3.2 volts AC, VAC, on the output, which is telling us how much power we're going to put into this kilowatt transformer. But anyways, clean sine wave, not even really loading it down or anything, but I'm just showing you guys how the power supply works. It's not really a full demo of this amplifier. I believe I've done a couple of them, and it's my very favorite amplifier that I run. Um, as you can tell, surface mount, and yeah, Bass Labs, um, surface mount, SMD parts. I was strongly involved in pushing this amplifier to um, SMD because the first version, and it's funny that I have a board on the bench here, was through hole components. We all know that I like SMD stuff. So anyways, as we can tell, if we turn on the power supply only half, we'll see that this will go up and go half and then back down again. So we won't get a full waveform. So that's why I push all on and all off on this thing right here. Um, I think I've been waiting many years for this power supply. So finally got one. I have a nice meter. I swear by this meter. The reason why I have it is because I want a precise... And it stays on. This thing, it stay on. I don't know how many times in previous videos that I use these. I mean, these are good meters. They're accurate. They're small. They're cheap. I think they're like 25 bucks each Canadian. And they work good. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. And I have four of them. I have this OLED version. And then I bought three of this version. Right? I'm going to turn on now. Yeah, there it goes. Turns on. I use these for checking rail voltages when turning on amplifiers. Um, the more meters I have, the better, because you always want to measure your rail voltages and what's going on and stuff like that, so there's no magic smoke. Anyways, quick little tour of what I have on the bench. Soon I'll be cleaning up. Oh, there's a pair of mini elves in there. Um, and anyways, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you why I didn't like why I bought this meter right here is because these turn off after like two minutes. It drives me nuts. So I swear by this guy. Um, and I use this guy a lot. I'm starting to dive in more about uh, FFT for measuring and uh, stuff. Soon up, I'm getting rid of this guy and I'm going to get another Siglin device. And I'm hoping for the 810. Uh, function generator, which is better than this, but that's what I could afford a long time ago, so that's what I have. And uh, yeah, just a little update on the bench. My new purchase right here, pretty happy. Bought a bunch of probes that are actually, I'm using one of them right now, too, uh, right here. So I bought these off Amazon, nice silicone wire with these nice big alligator clips. Probably have, oh yeah, here's one right here, here's a black one. Nice, really good alligator clips. Highly recommend these things. Really, really like them. Nice and strong. They're firm. As you can tell when they grip. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. Uh, no, maybe not. No, phone doesn't want to focus today. Kinda, maybe. Jerk. Anyways, um, good string, strong. Um, Clips on them, the le the jaws, there we go. The jaws actually align. So when you clamp onto something, they actually clamp on. They don't skew and go sideways and things pull off. But uh, I really like these. And then I got some other leads up here. Can't remember where it is. But these ones right here. I 
put some nice alligator clips on there too. As you can tell, those ones are not skewed, they're actually square. Yeah, so anyways, this quick little demo of my power supply. And uh, pretty happy. Next up, maybe a full picture of my uh, bench here with better clean out. So yeah, have a good day.